Hello, how are you? Today we are cooking a wonderful, delightful Apex class. We'll enjoy it so much because you'll hear this term a lot. Batch Apex, bad job, Apex job. You need to understand what it is, how to read the code and how to create it yourself. As a Salesforce chef, I'll teach you how to do it all. Let's get started. You might be wondering, what's a use case of an Apex bad job? When would you ever need to use a bad job? Here's the use case. Let's say you need to update the description field on 10,001 account records. Let's say you need to change it from US to USA. How would you do it? Would you be able to just query 10,001 records and update them? No, you would not be because the governor limit on DML says you're only able to update 10,000 records at a time. So what do you do? What do you do? That's when the Apex bad job comes handy. What you can do is first pull these records, do some execution, and then do some post execution code such as send an email. What Apex bad job does in, in execution is processes all these records 200 at a time so that you don't reach the governor limit 200 is not set hard in stone you can change it say 200 or 50 or even one it will just take really long time to process all these records so always start with 200 see how, how it goes and if you're encountering problems then look at decreasing the batch size so let's look at how to create the apex job right now it's much easier than you think you ready it's a three-step process in step one we dynamically query for the the records we want to execute on in the second step we send these records for certain execution and each time that we execute these records in batch sizes of 200 by default it's 200 we get a new set of governor limits and once it's all processing happens say we have 20,000 records that we want to do something with once we process these 20,000 records is there anything we want to see happen in a lot of cases we want to see a confirmation email or a failure email to the person who initiated this process okay so you see to write a batch apex class you need to take into account three things first you have to query for the records secondly you have to send these records to certain execution and these queried records will be an argument for the apex class and thirdly you can execute certain post execution code all right let's look at it in more detail this is the official documentation on batch apex class basically it's telling us that in the first step in the start method we query for the records and we can use the database dot query locator this is what typically i use and here we do collect the records or objects to pass to the execute method in the execute method we use the database dot batchable context in the finish method we do the same so how does this look in practice i'll show you Here's a class that processes invoices. And since I have a lot of invoices that I want to process, I'm implementing the database.batchable as object class. And I'm using the database.query locator with a start method. So in the start method, as you remember, we're querying, right? We're querying for the records. And to query, I'm using a dynamic SQL select id name from this custom object where status equals approved okay and then returning this query i'm returning this and this query becomes the scope becomes the argument for the execution i want to see happen so i'm using this class in this class i'm taking this post billings method and i'm passing the scope the query into this method post billings okay 200 
records at a time, I'm running this, these account records through this method. And once it's all done, yeah, I can have certain execution happen, such as send an email. But I don't really need anything, so I left it blank. So in a nutshell, this is an implementation of a batch class. Once again, to reiterate, the key thing is a start, execute, and finish. If you have to remember anything from this presentation, just remember the start and the execute, okay? In the start, basically dynamic SQL, in the execute, basically you take whatever you query it for and pass it in for execution. So let's say you your code, your class, process invoices, implemented the batch Apex class. Now how do you run this? And I'll show you. It's very easy. All you have to do is database dot execute batch then you write new and you put in your class name and my class name is process invoices and this is the batch size I want to use I kept the 200 I click execute success the way I can monitor the execution is I could go to apex jobs and here I see it's processing. I have 100 batches to process. I've already processed 27. If I want, I can abort it. I can also monitor through the query editor. One second, let me, let me. Apex. So here we go, select, ID, ID status. Okay, everything is complete. Okay, the Apex job has completed. Has completed. So I can also add on other fields. Job items processed. What I showed you just now is how you can initiate uh, batch execution so basically it's database dot execute batch new in the class name that implemented the, the batch class and then the batch size and we can monitor the execution either through the query editor or instead of going to apex jobs i think it's much easier to monitor through apex jobs in apex jobs everything is laid out for you it's a few clicks that's it for further reading, I suggest you review using batch Apex documentation. I also suggest that you write a sample class that implements this. And thirdly, I really suggest that you do the trailhead on batch Apex.